Holy moly. Today is Monday and the stock market is red. There's a red sea of every stock that I'm tracking, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're seeing over 546 points down in the index. That means a lot because for the index to move one point, one percent in every direction, that means there has to be a lot of bleeding going on for a lot of different companies. And I mean, were you surprised? I mean, when the Fed, the manipulator of the stock market, says they're going to stop buying assets, that we're going to see a sell-off. I mean, are you surprised that the insiders from Coinbase to Elon Musk to Amazon owner Jeff Bezos to so many other insiders were selling off their stocks. You know, again, they have a higher seat than me and you do, way higher, and they can see what's coming down the pipeline, in my opinion. So it's no shock to me as a refugee to America to realize that when the insiders are selling, it's probably time for me to get out. But again, I'm not in the stock market because I don't believe in the stock market because I know the market is rigged. Okay. So, but by standing on the sideline, I can see all these big timers are selling and the retail investors are holding the bag. Today, we're 547 points down. As soon as the stock market opens up a couple hours later, we're 2% down, 2% in the index, which means that there's a lot of companies bleeding out. Just yesterday, I did a video for you guys showing you that we're already seeing 40 to 60% losses in big companies like Square, like PayPal, and so many other companies that are brought to you that are they're already down 40 to 60%. Back in 2016, I say we're going to have a stock market crash 40 to 60 percent, and we're already seeing that happen. Sure, it's not being televised on TV. The media is not talking about it. TV is not talking about it. The news, they're not talking about, you know, these companies that have already got haircuts 40 to 60 percent down. And this is just the beginning, in my opinion, that we're just barely warming up or we're just barely getting started. OK, uh, and there's going to be more pain coming. Why do I say there's more pain coming? Because the Fed is in a checkmate positioning, okay? If they don't raise the interest rates to that 18% that I predicted, okay, double digits, then we have a high probability of having civil unrest or civil war in America. At the same time, we have a high probability of the dollar reserve currency being debunked. The world's not going to take the dollars anymore because we're printing so much of it so fast that it's unheard of in the history of mankind okay now the the fed is in a checkmate position if they don't raise the interest rate we're we're going to have hyperinflation you know there's going to be people fighting each other for teeth and nails because you know when you have half the population not eating the other half eating there's going to be upset people, which totally makes sense, right? And if they do raise the interest rate, then you're going to have significant pain because of all the deleveraging that's going to be happening in from the stock markets to businesses' operation expenses to, you know, Zillow's ability to borrow almost free money to buy these properties and so on and so on, okay? So if they do increase the rate, there's going to be half the population hurting, right? And these are going to be more of the richer people and the middle class and poor people. And if they don't raise the interest rate, there's going to be hyperinflation. So, you know, the outcome doesn't look really, really good. There's like four probabilities. A, we're going to go to war and we see actions happening in with China, with Russia, okay? Because one of the ways to get out of the deep depression is by going to war, okay? The other possibility of options is that you know they're going to jack the interest rate up to 18 percent slowly but surely and that's going to devastate a lot of people you know the house prices are going to tumble down the stock market is going to tumble down you know the, the average cost of a car is going to tumble down because most people can't afford to buy any of these assets without borrowing money and when there's loose lending then the price of assets just go up, just like the price of an F-150 keeps going up year after year, it's going to keep going up. 
when I was in high school, you could buy an F-150 for 15K on, on a sale. Today, the same F-150, they want 40K for it. So you can see how inflation has jacked up so much, okay? Even though producing, manufacturing through technologies and machines had, has made it a lot more efficient and faster producing a car. For example, did you know it takes only 17 hours to make a Toyota car? Where the most reliable car on, on the market, it only takes 17 hours to make a car. Did you know it takes over one year, about a year, to make one Rolex watch because it's made by hand? So you can see how machines and technology is making productions a lot faster, right? But the price of these items keep going up and up because of all the money printing that's happening, <clears throat> okay? And because of all, all the easy cheese, all the easy money that's the bankers allow corporations, the average person to borrow. So the more there's people that are able to buy, when there's a line of people waiting to buy a F-150 because they're, they, they don't have to have all the money, they just have to come with the first month monthly payments and just sign away and get a, and, and write off in their F-150, there's gonna be a big line, there's gonna be a lot of demand for it and so they can jack up the prices higher and higher. Well, if interest rates hits up, then the price of that F-150 may come back down to that $25,000 because no one can get a loan and the payments are gonna be too high because in America, unfortunately, when people think about buying something, they think about how much is the minimum monthly payments a month. They're not thinking about, well, how much is the actual price of this car? If this car is 35K, they're not thinking it's 35. They're thinking, oh, it's only gonna cost me $400 a month. So, you know, where, you know, people like myself and, and more sophisticated people don't look at the monthly payments. It has no relevance to it. I'm not gonna buy it and get in debt with it. I'm gonna pay cash for it and I'm gonna negotiate the lowest price that I can or I'm not just gonna buy it, right? And so when this type of mentality happens because interest rates go up, people are gonna actually have to save up their money to pay for it because the minimum monthly payments is so high for them and they probably can't afford it which is gonna knock down prices of real estate, prices of F-150s down to earth, okay? Same thing we see happening with the stock market, same thing we're seeing happening with the Bitcoin currency. When, when there's leverage, people can, you know, 10 times their money. If they have a thousand bucks, they get 10 times, they get a hundred times that money by getting into debt in stocks and into the crypto market. So that's why we see these high uh, evaluations, if you wanna call it, of these assets just shooting up, you know, uh, from Bitcoin all the way to other assets. Now I'm a big Bitcoin believer because there's a limited amount, it's decentralized, no, no corporation can 100% manipulate it and control it. And so I'm more a favor of that versus let's say the stock market, okay? Or let's say some company uh, stocks. So, you know, there's major pain coming and you know, the Fed is in a checkmate situation. They only have a few more moves they can do before the, the card collapses and it's gonna cause severe pain for the average American, all the way to the rich people, the, even the elites, even though they've been the primary beneficiary of the money printing. Okay, let me say that again. The primary beneficiary of the money printing is the elite corporation because the money flows to them. Big Brother gives it to you and you and I spin it and it flows right to the elite. So the Amazons and so on, okay? So as I see it, the checkmate moves is here. America's gonna go to war to get out of the depression or they're gonna have high interest rate. And if they don't jack up the interest rate, then they're gonna have high inflation, which is gonna result into civil rest and civil war, okay? So those are the only four options that I see and, and, and five being the consequence or being the side effect of uh, policy if they don't raise the interest rate that we're going to lose the world reserve currency which then is going to lead us into war okay um because that's that's what big brother does in all countries right you know um to stay in control they're willing to split your kids blood uh for them to stay in power okay so it's not looking pretty you know, um, in America, and it's not looking pretty in other countries because we export inflation through all these other countries, okay? That's what, what it means to print the money. That's what it means to have the world reserve currency because we print and we send those dollars out to India, to Pakistan, to all these other countries, and they, they send us their goods, 
right? So as more and more countries realize that the value of their money that they're holding, the Royal Reserve currency, is getting less and less and less, they're probably going to abandon it like what China is doing, what Russia is doing, what all these countries are doing. They're getting into their own um some countries are getting into Bitcoin, like uh, El Salvador and other countries, and some are just getting back into the traditional gold that's been around for over 5,000 years for the beginning of man's history. And so it's now looking pretty for America, okay? It's really now looking pretty for a lot of countries, but we are, we're the ones that, that have the most to lose because, you know, we live a life of lo lavish, lavishly. Even if you're the poorest guy in America, you're living life really good. You got running water, you got electricity, you got the fire system, the police system. You have all these things to help you. You have a security net, social security, unemployment, all this stuff. So we're living really, really good, even if we're living in poverty in America, where other countries, they don't have that kind of luxury, okay? And their only reason, in my opinion, and we live the way we do is because we create debt and we print out a whole lot of money and we get everyone else into debt, okay? Uh, and once we lose that ability to create debt and get everyone else in the world into debt, then, you know, um, because they don't want to accept our dollars anymore, then, then the American population like me and you are going to be really, really in trouble because, you know, to get a cheap something from China is not going to be cheap anymore because our dollars are de so devalued. It's going to be this a lot of money get something from China if they're willing to accept our money, okay? And so what people don't realize is the world is so interconnected that if one goes down, the other one has a big probability going down as well. And what we can see is that the whole world is looking up to Big Brother America and whatever they're doing, they're falling. Now, there are some countries like El Salvador that are being self-thinkers and going out and going to the decentralized monetary system that cannot be controlled or edited or whatever, censored, all right? But the majority of the other countries like Europe, and they're just following America's footstep. And, you know, they don't want to face, face the pain. And no one does, right? It's painful to... Uh, take pain you know and that's why we have sensors receptors in our body it doesn't want us to notify us that something's bad happening so we can stop it or run away or stop the pain not that many people are going to run into the pain like entrepreneurs right like dreamers that are like tesla or like myself or even like you that have a dream and you're willing to work for it and you're willing to buckle up and you know sacrifice because you know the real way to create wealth is through imagination and creativity and then getting on your horse and start riding it out you know start working on it okay america's wealth is through debt you know again the think about the richest guy you know okay you know, we call them billionaires and a lot of them are just billions and billions of dollars in debt so the more debt they have the more America worships these guys, okay? I don't understand how that works because, you know, for me, uh, in my world, that could be totally wrong in a sense of, you know, what other people think, but re realistically, if you want to be financial free, you can't have debt, right? I mean, you're really, the bank owns you, okay? Freedom doesn't come with having a chain around your neck, having debt. Freedom, in my opinion, comes from Deciding what you want to do, how you want to do, when you want to do it. You know, if you want to work today, you do. If you don't want to, you don't. You don't have any debt, any stress from other people paying them. You don't have anybody pushing you down, okay? And so, you know, in other countries, that's how they work too. They don't believe in debt. But in America, you know, the more debt someone has, we call them rich, right? Like, if you look at some of the richest people, we, we think, oh, they have so much money. But I can promise you, if you add their debt and all the assets they own and all the incomes they make, if the debt overcomes their riches, then they're really poverty in debt. Now they may have multiple houses, multiple cars, multiple jets, but they're just indebted to the bank. And that's this ugly truth that no one wants to talk about is that, you know, we're a debt-based society. So if you want to get ahead, you got to get in debt. Now that's the traditional way, just like going to school, going to college, but it doesn't have to be the only way. For me, you know, I'd never borrowed money to start a business. I use creativity and imagination. I've done okay for myself. You know, I one 
point in my life, I had multiple rental houses, multiple businesses, making good money, no no debt to anyone. Today, I don't have all that stuff. I donated most of it to the homeless, but I still don't have any debt and I still decide what I want to do. If I want to work today, I want to go ride bikes today, I want to do this. I'm in charge. I don't have a boss. No one's going to tell me what to do. I don't have a banker that I have to kiss their butt. You know, I, I'm a free man. Now, I don't have all the material things that I had before or other people have, but I don't have to answer to anyone. I don't have a credit card debt. I don't have any debt, right? Um, and when I buy something, I know how to negotiate to get a good deal because I've worked hard for the money and I saved it up and I'm going to pay it all at once versus what is the monthly minimum payment, okay? I don't think like that. But we live in a society that we think that, you know, debt is success. And this is why we're going to be paying one of the heaviest costs in the world because our society is just debt based. I know people that have billions in dollars, but they're billions and trillions in debt. So, you know, there is pain and suffering coming. There are opportunities out there as well. You know, as the market crashes, we're going to have a big sell in cryptos. We're going to have big sells in the stock market. We're going to have big sells in real estate. Great opportunities that we have never seen. And if you have cash and you can buy properties or buy stocks or buy X or buy Z, and I'm not telling you what you should do, but I'm just pointing out some of the stuff that I'm going to do, then it's going to create great opportunity for wealth without debt. So again, wealth without debt. I think this is the best time to be alive. You have technology, you have blockchain, uh, decentralized blockchain. Um, you, you have the stock market crashing like crazy. You have Bitcoin crashing like crazy. And I think that you're going to have real estate crashing like crazy. Uh, and it's going to create great opportunities. And, you know, personally, I like when there is less money out there because you know it's hard for me to compete with a guy that gets unlimited free money from the bank all he has to do is just sign a piece of paperwork versus i have to create through my imagination and creativity and put it to the street to create you know money right but because i have to do all that stuff it builds calluses on my hand it makes my muscles stronger it makes my brain stronger it makes my will tougher where the guy that just had to sign on a piece of paper and they give him 100k or 100 million he didn't have to do any of that stuff right um so we're, we're living in a society where you know it's beneficiary for me and people like me that there is no debt that, that, that they increase the interest rate to 18%, that they make it harder for people to borrow because then it levels out the playing field because you're, you're, I'm dealing with people on steroids, right? They're pumping it up in their butt and they're borrowing all this money. They can buy all this stuff, but it's the banker stuff, but they're flaunting it on social media like it's their own stuff and people are worshiping, bowing down to them like, oh God, you're so much in debt and you have all these luxury stuff, not realizing that they're just making monthly payments on these things. They don't own these things, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and the, they, the bank owns them, right? Where, you know, a guy like me doesn't own any doesn't own any debt. You know, I don't make shitload of money. I give most of my stuff to the homeless uh, because I realize that, you know, accumulation is cancer, right? You know, and the most important thing is to follow my heart. Whatever my heart wants me to do, I do it. If today I want to write a book, I will. Tomorrow I want to flip bikes, I will. If next week I just want to write bikes every freaking day for the next year, I do that. I just did that this whole year. This whole last year, all I did was ride bikes, guys. You know, I put thousands and thousands of miles on multiple bikes, okay? So that comes from freedom, right? It doesn't come, you know, from slavery. You, you can't do that kind of stuff when you're a slave, right? You can't do that kind of stuff when you have a car payment, a house payment, this payment, that payment, credit card payment, this payment, payment student loans. This is, you can't do all of that stuff, right? And so freedom, in my mind, comes from being able to take a risk, Okay, like right now, the market is crashing. Guess what, guys? I'm buying into cryptos, right? I'm not telling you you should do it. That's just what I'm doing, okay? Don't, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CP. I'm not an attorney. So don't listen to me. I could be totally wrong. But for my past experiences is that creativity, imagination, and risk are the ingredients of truly free men. Truly free men, okay? Uh, and the slaves, they want to borrow money. Now, the slaves will come and tell you that they're free and like look at the Binley and look at their jets and look at this and this and this, but only 1% of all those rich people are really truly rich. The other 90%, they look like they're rich and they possess properties and possess material things that they haven't paid for and really they're in debt. End of story. You know what I'm saying? If, if you look at all the billionaires and millions in America, if you just do the math, how much they owe, how much they really make, or in their asses, 
90%, if not 99% of them are going to be negative equity. They're going to have negative uh, balance. And we worship, or not me, but a lot of Americans worship these individuals like they're, they're gods or something because they were able to get themselves into billions of dollars into debt, dude. Uh, and so, you know, that's why we're having the problems we're having today. Okay, we're having hyperinflation, you know, because the Fed can't cut because all these people are in debt, right? They, they, they got to buy these assets because the dollar reserve currency is going to fall. If people don't spend money and keep buying the debt economy, then, you know, consumer economy, then the whole economy is going to shrink. And we're just going to be non-existence when it comes to our growth because we're known for growth but we get that growth through an ejection an artificial steroids pumped in our ass to be able to buy more to consume more and it's totally fake and i think the people around the world are starting to realize that a lot of people want to come to america and not realize that when they come here there's going to be workhorses versus freedom because there's so much abundance of everything but you gotta you know get into debt to get this stuff and a lot of people will get into debt because they see the advertisement, they see Jones, they see Bob, they see their neighbors doing this, doing that, and they want to be like them, not realizing those those fools are indebted to the bankers, and the bankers are the only one benefiting from this, you know, where me on the other hand, I've exited the metrics, I realize what's going on, they're printing the fucking money, they're printing it out left and right, and, you know, why should I spend my life energy working for the man, right? Why should I spend my life energy making all this money just to buy more and more stuff where I already have enough stuff. I can just go do fun stuff, right? Enjoy time with my kids, enjoy take them to the park, go for walks, go ride bikes, do stuff that I really are passionate about versus just trying to make more money, try to buy my next rental. When I try to buy my next rental, try to get two more located. It's like to a win, you know? Now, some people would love to work and they get on TV and on YouTube. They talk about work seven days and not have any days off. I'm happy for those people, right? I used to be that guy. I am so lucky that I got to waken up that I realized that, man, that stuff is just programmed, right? That I only have so much life to live. I can spend all my life trying to accumulate fake papers that they print out of the printing machine to buy shit that I don't need to impress other people, or I can just be me and enjoy what I want to do and live my life because I, my, my life is numbered just like your life is, but they're not going to tell it to you in TV, okay? Uh, and so anyways, guys, we're seeing bloody streets in stocks and cryptos and very soon we're going to see it in real estate we already saw seven million people that couldn't make their mortgage payments um so interesting time a lot of opportunity a lot of pain um but i'm excited to be here because you know just like you guys you know i know that great things are coming for us great things are coming from us through decentralized uh, land, digital land, like decentral land, to decentralize currency like Bitcoin, to decentralize uh, lending apps, to decentralize financing, where we don't have one dude making billions of dollars off of our creation, right? We all become part of that creation and we all get rewarded. And I think it's the best revolution we, we're seeing in our lifetime through um, decentralized applications and softwares and monetary systems and so on versus having kings and queens and um, presidents and dictatorships and stuff like that. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you could click the like button, always remember you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, smarter than you think, and twice as beautiful as you ever imagined. Romy, peace.